We have proven that here in California that we, the people, not the politicians, are still the boss. Once upon a time, the now and for many years sky blue politics of California suffered a tax revolt called Proposition 13. Well, I think the consequences of Proposition 13 are constitute a major social, economic, and political revolution. Today, a large group of the state's businesses and taxpayer associations have assembled enough signatures to put a significant anti-tax measure on this November's ballot. Imagine a world where new taxes and fees need the stamp of voter approval before they see the light of day. Envision the tax code, not as a labyrinth of confusion, but as a simplified guide for your business. This is the promise of the Taxpayer Protection Act an initiative wholeheartedly supported by the National Federation of Independent Business. This is the second coming of Proposition 13, the California anti-tax measure that passed in 1978 and became the basis of the National Republican Party's commitment to lower taxes. I think it's the greatest. It is, it's, we're telling the government, the city government, the state government, that we are tired of paying higher taxes and we're tired of supporting the system and all of the affiliated costs of running a government. It's too much government for the money. Two years later, then California Governor Ronald Reagan, a proponent of Prop 13, became president, running on a platform to reduce government spending and cut taxes. We don't have inflation because the people are living too well. We have inflation because the government is living too well. Twice, in 1981 and 1986, Reagan cut taxes, and Republican governors have done so ever since. Yes, you can lick inflation by increasing productivity and by decreasing the cost of government to the place that we have balanced budgets and are no longer running, grinding out printing press money, flooding the market with it because the government is spending more than it takes in. And my economic plan calls for that. Needless to say, California's current governor, Democrat Gavin Newsom, is appalled, as are state political leaders and union officials. Today I'm pleased to bring you forward item 203, resolution opposing the Taxpayer Protection and Government Accountability Act. It's currently scheduled for the 2024 November ballot, but it certainly would, if passed, impact a broad array of services that are core services essential to the quality of life to your residents here in San Diego. Call me irresponsible, but this sounds like the best thing to come along since California's tax revolt in the 1970s. The original Prop 13 movement came to life in the 1970s not because its advocates opposed taxation to pay for public services, but because the state's liberal political class, including its public unions, had shown itself incapable of restraint. We have decided that if the people don't want schools, that we're going to accommodate them, and they're not going to get schools. The schools are going to shut down, and we're not going to open again until we get the money to pay all of our teachers to go back to work. I'm accepting no cuts whatsoever. We're shutting the system down and it's gonna stay down. Liberals and progressives of the sort populating blue states purport that their purpose is merely to support obvious social needs. But today that big heart looks like an infinitely expandable hot air balloon. Notwithstanding the property tax measure, California's Democrats the past four decades have taxed and regulated the state into unaffordability for rising numbers of the state's population. They've blown through the roof on costs for housing, health care, utilities, and insurance. Are you supporting a wealth tax? No. Yet again, why the hell do you keep writing about that? <laughs> That wasn't just for the Wall Street Journal editorial board. Unstoppable, California just raised the minimum wage to $20 for fast food restaurants. I want to do right by my employees, and I want to pay them as much as I can. But this bill, AB 1228, has really hit our operations hard. Um, we're no longer hiring. We're not backfilling positions. We're not growing in the state anymore. We're not expanding more locations. And I'm ultimately thinking about selling or closing my business. Swivel cross-country to New York, which is bumping into the same limits to government growth. Other than fighting crime, New York City desperately needs money to rebuild its subways and other disintegrating transportation infrastructure. Solution? Charge motorists. 
Most cars will pay $15 a day to enter Manhattan south of 60th Street. New York has the more traffic than any place in the United States, and now we're doing something about it. One reason New York has resorted to congestion pricing is that it has squeezed the tax turnip dry. All in, federal, state, city, payroll tax surcharges, New York City's top marginal tax rate exceeds 50%. Today, we are proposing a corporate transit fee. Across the Hudson River, New Jersey Democratic Governor Phil Murphy's solution to the state's falling apart transportation system is a proposed corporate transit fee on big companies. And let me take this opportunity to thank in advance the big companies which will be stepping up. There was a time long ago when the once proud party of Franklin Roosevelt did deliver basic local services. Today, it has become the party of nickel and dime. We could all learn from the California tax revolt of 1978, especially if it goes national today. Is it going to prove that, in fact, local government, state government, was overfat, overfed, and wasteful? I think that the results will show that there was some of that. It'll also show, I think, that you need some fundamental reforms in order to make it more productive and creative. You've got to change the civil service system. You can't have all these mandated programs that if you want to, in effect, really reduce government expenditures, you've got to make some fundamental changes, and everybody's going to have to wake up and recognize that.